All right, our goal here is find a fourth degree polynomial with real coefficients that has these given zeros. Okay, so negative three, positive two, and i, so a complex zero. And we also want to know that our function, when you plug in a negative two, is going to go through 100 for a y value. Okay, so let's get started with the zeros that we know, and then a zero that's given to us, but we have to recognize that it's given to us. So we have zeros at negative three, positive two, and positive i. All right, like I said, we were given three, but we actually should know four. And this is based on the complex conjugate theorem, that if we know that zero plus i is a complex zero, zero minus i should also be a complex zero. It's, it's conjugate, right? That maybe off to the side, I'll illustrate this is zero plus i was the one that was given to us. It's complex conjugate, zero minus i, or negative i is also going to be a zero um, because they always have to go in these pairs for complex zeros, and they're always conjugates. Okay, so now that we know all of our zeros, let's try to list out the factored form. Okay, so our function name, I'll just call it f of x. If we know zeros, we can get factors that go hand in hand with those, because it's always x minus whatever the zero is has to be a factor. So x minus a negative three, we could write that as x plus three is gonna be a factor. Positive two goes as x minus two as a factor. I gets x minus i and negative i gets x minus a negative i or x plus i. All right, now the thing we haven't taken into account is there could be some sort of stretch or compression, a scalar multiple out in front here. So what I'm going to do to incorporate that is I'm going to put a out in front, just being some constant sitting out in front. It's not going to be a variable like x. And we're going to use this additional piece of information to help us find a. So we know from this information that if we plug a negative it 2 in for our x's, this should equal for an f of x value 100. So on the left hand side, I'm going to replace that with 100 equals a times, now I'm going to replace each of the x's with negative twos. So negative two plus three, negative two minus two, negative two plus minus i, and negative two plus i. All right, now it's all constants, and I know this may be a little bit frightening with the i's still hanging out here, but we'll deal with those. Everything's numbers, even if they're complex, except for a. So our next goal is going to be solve for a. So to do so, what I'm going to do is do some simplifying down on the right hand side, like negative two plus three makes one. Negative two minus two more makes negative four. So I just kind of brought those along. Now let's deal with these and actually multiply this out. So I'm just going to do some distributive property or first outer and our last. Sometimes we refer to this as FOIL. So negative two times negative two makes positive four. Outer, we have negative two times positive i makes negative two i. Inner negative i times negative two, the double negative makes positive two i. And then last we have negative i times positive i is negative i squared. All right, now in simplifying this down, we can definitely cancel out negative two i plus two i. Those are like terms, basically just combining those together bring that four along, but now we want to be careful. Whenever you see an i squared, hopefully we recall that i squared is always equal to negative one. So we can replace this i squared with a negative one. So we can say minus an i squared, but a negative one in that spot. So this will give us 100 equals a times negative four times the double negative there's gonna make an addition, so five. So really we have negative 20a on the right hand side equals 100. And to get a all by itself, we'll divide by negative 20. So a is gonna equal negative five. All right, the last thing we need to do to get full credit on this is take this value of a and put it back into the factored version that we gave up here. So I think good solution here is gonna be f of x equals negative five times x plus three, times x minus two, uh, times x minus i, times x plus i, 
Um, typically, we don't have to distribute this all the way out and multiply it out to get a good solution. Usually, factored form is going to be perfectly fine for us. If you do have to take your time and multiply it out, I would do it in a similar fashion as what we did up here by first starting with the complex um, factors at the end here and working my way, kind of expanding out, kind of working right to left. All right. Take your time. These aren't that bad of problems, but they are a little bit tricky if you don't know the complex conjugate theorem and don't know that negative i in this situation is going to also go as a complex zero. All right. Good luck. Hope it helps.